Hey, 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 y'all. It is Golden Spaces, an Odyssey original podcast with Justin and Nat. And it's the playoffs. We here, baby. We here, baby. Our Warriors are in the playoffs versus the Kings. And so we wanted to take y'all questions and get everybody ready for this playoff matchup. If you haven't tuned in yet, make sure you check out the playoff preview that Justin and I did with um, Kenny Carraway from the J... What podcast is it? Oh my gosh, I'm going blank. Um, it's another J Street Odyssey Vibes. podcast. J Street Vibes. There you go. Sorry for that brain fart, but J Street Vibes podcast with Kenny Caraway out in Sacramento. You probably know him from the radio as well, um, but it was a dope pod and we broke down and did a playoff preview. So some of the stuff that you guys have sent us as questions we got into, but we just doing a straight mailbag for y'all. So um, appreciate you engaging with us and we'll, we'll get right into it. So our first question comes from, I don't know this person's name because a period is their name, like literally just the period. Um, so um, the handle though is clicks spelled with an X. Mm -hmm. C-L-I-X, Clicks 345. So thank you for your question, Clicks. Um, do you think Wigs will start game one and who loses the most minutes? So yes, I do think Andrew Wiggins will start game one. I don't have any inside information right now. Nothing has been reported. But, I, you know, similar to Stephen Curry, when he was out last year and granted he was coming off of an injury. So it's a little different for, for Andrew Wiggins, but they basically mentioned like how they're going to kind of like ramp him up and do like a accelerated version of that over this week. So I feel like the only reason you'd be doing that is if you're anticipating playing him in the first game. So he'll likely be on a minutes restriction, I think, but um I think we're going to definitely see Andrew Wiggins back for, for game one. And in terms of who loses the most minutes, well, at this point, you're in playoff rotation time, right? So if you look at who your playoff players are, one through nine, um, you know, I believe it's our starting five with Andrew Wiggins. And then it's Jordan Poole, Gary Payton the second, Dante, whichever order you put those two in. Um, and, and Jonathan Kaminga. So those are our top nine guys. And I think that's going to be your key playoff rotation. So I would have said during the regular season, like with Wiggs coming back, you're probably going to just not see Anthony Lamb. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. What kind of minutes restriction do you think um, Wiggins would be on, Justin? Um, probably cap him at like 25, I guess, to start. It also depends on how he looks. They said he looked really good in the scrimmage that they did earlier this week. Um, so you never know. So and in playoffs, most guys are playing what, like thirty-five minutes? Yeah, at least yeah, at least thirty-five. But a guy like Wiggins was usually, depending on how the game is going, pushing thirty-eight, thirty-seven. So. So I mean, in this instance, who picks up some more of those minutes? I think it just depends on like the matchup. To be honest, you know. I don't know if Kerr is really going to want to go to someone like um, Lamb in a game one, or maybe he will because it's game one, but I, I don't think so. So I think maybe you're going to see, um, and that they're also being very careful with GP too. So um, Dante is someone he trusts. I think you can expect to maybe see Dante play a little bit more minutes. And I would also say maybe Kaminga gets some more minutes as well. Um and they just try to figure out with within the matchups. That would be my guess. Yeah, I would guess the same thing. I, mean, I think in a regular season, they were playing close to a playoff level rotation for the last, you know, 10 or so games. And, you know, all the minutes that Lamb was playing or Moody was playing are probably all going to go to Wiggins. So at least initially, a lot of the guys that we've been seeing won't be losing a lot of minutes. I think Dante loses some because – if he doesn't start, that's just like six, seven minutes of the, at the beginning of the game that he's not going to play. Um, right. He might play the rest of his rotation normally, but that first stint is he's not going to be out there. So I would say Dante is getting the immediate dip in minutes. Okay. So our second question um, 
is who's the third best Kings player we got to worry about? So this is like a multi-part question. So let, let's start with that. And who does that question come from, Justin? That question is coming from, let me double check. Candlestick, our guy Candlestick, Will. Oh, there you go. Yes. Shout out to Will. Appreciate you. Um, long time listener, going back to the legacy pod on that. So really appreciate you. Um, who's the King's third best player? This is so fascinating. Um, Justin, why don't you take that? Yeah, I think by default it's Herder. But it can be – it's kind of like a similar dynamic to the Warriors where, like, any any given night their second-best player can be a different player. But, um, you know, I think Herter is, like, the default guy, and then you can throw Harrison in there, you can throw Malik Monk in there, and you can throw Keegan Murray in there. So they got four guys that can be that third-best guy on any given night. Um, I just default to Herter with his shooting ability. It's very valuable for their team and his size and he also can do like some secondary playmaking and stuff like that too so i'll go kevin herter yeah i hear you justin i think i agree about herter being their third um in general i think this is a fascinating discussion because i'm trying to figure out where i rank all the players in this series right like so I, I think the top five players in the series, and I think we're in agreement with this, but I think the top five players is Steph, of course. So let's take him out the equation so we know that. And then there's Fox, Sabonis, Clay, Dre. Who has the second best player in this series? Is it De'Aaron Fox? I think so. I think you got to give him that that respect at this point what you can do at the end of games. And then overall, I mean, like Sabonis has a very strong case as well, but a typically lean the perimeter guy, you know, in these type of situations. Yeah. And so that was like my struggle. Cause I was like, I think it's Fox as like, I think I'd give it to Fox, but then I was like, do they also have the third best player in the series? Or would I then go back to, this version of clay and i'm not sure uh yeah i think it's a toss-up i think it's a toss-up we got to see how it plays out either any of those guys are capable of outplaying the other guy in my opinion same thing you can throw Draymond in that mix too um it's just whoever gets the better in that in that particular series okay but then the other thing we're in agreement with is after those five guys the Warriors, they then after their top three, you know, like the Kings have their top two, but then after that, there's like a, like a kind of like a steep, you know, decline, mm -hmm. I guess, in terms of talent and, and upside. And so, you know, Andrew Wiggins is still, you know, I don't know if Andrew Wiggins, who we get back is going to be clearly better than Harrison Barnes. Um, Still should be. But he still should be, right? Um, and then Herder's interesting to me. Um, who's going to be on Herder? That's, that's, up for, that's up to Steve. I think it might be Steph, but I think that's up to Steve to determine. But going into that Memphis series, Steph, they put Steph on Bane, so I wouldn't expect him to be played much differently. There's similar type of players, right? Movement shooter who can do a little bit of ball handling stuff. Not super quick off the dribble, but got a little bit of size. I think they typically put Steph on that guy because Keegan Murray is a little tall for Steph. So Clay will Even be on he, Murray? I think so. And I think he played him really well last time they played. Um, obviously, Keegan Murray would be doing a lot more spotting up and stuff like that with Fox and Sabonis playing. But, yeah, I think they go Wiggs, Fox, Loon, Sabonis, Draymond on Harrison so he can kind of help off. <laughs> And um, Clay on Murray and Steph on Herter. I think that's what they do. So, yeah. So then I guess to Will's question, um, I don't know that. I mean, I think, yes, we have to be concerned about Herter because he can have one of those nights where he shoots, 
you know, but mm -hmm. when Steph is dialed in on defense, when he's locked in on it, he's very good. And I think if his job is to like be on herder, I think, I think he'll do a good enough job that maybe at most for one game in the series, maybe herder just has like a night, but I think over the course of a series, I don't think we'll have to worry about him. Um, and same thing for Murray. I think, I think clay will be good on Murray. So Again, again, I think with any of these guys, like, look, they're probably all going to have at least one night. The point is to make sure that they don't have multiple nights <laughs> mm -hmm. throughout the series and or that they're not doing it together. So if, like, Herter goes off one night, Murray isn't also going off. Harrison Barnes isn't having, like, some, some hot shooting night from three, right? You can live with maybe just one of them going off. You just don't want all three of them going off at the same time or two of them, and you also don't want it to be – like in multiple games, right? Like you want to contain it for sort of like when the 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 heat kept letting Danny Green go off and then like, you know, <laughs> back in that series mm -hmm. and, and Tony Parker's like, I don't know why he's still open. Like why? And then like, you know, Chris Bosch was like, don't worry, that won't be an issue again. And then they just, they shut it down. They stopped it, right? So right. I don't, think it's going to be like an ongoing thing even if one of those guys goes off um so yeah i mean monk monk can be monk can get hot we know he can get hot mm -hmm. so you know are we worried about any of those guys yes if the warriors don't have like a good defensive plan and they're not like locked in then yes you would need to worry about them because all those guys have the potential to go off but justin always says this the warriors game plan for people, teams, opposing teams better than most. And so I think they'll be ready for that and they'll be dialed into that and they'll get that. And like, we know from what Draymond said, they want this to be a short series. And if it's going to be a short series, they are going to have to really, really be um, dialed in. One thing I'll say, and I always say this is that it's very hard to win three games in a row it's a, it's a, in any series, any series, any team, it's a hard thing to do, right? Much more sweep. So if they want this to be a short series, as in four or five games, they have to really, really be focused and dialed in. Agreed. Got it. And you got to take game one if you want it to be four or five. Yes. I mean, obviously, if you want it to be four, you got to take game one. But if you want it to be five, I think it's like you said, it's going to be tough to, lose the game one and then win four straight. Uh, that's just going to be tough. So, yeah, make sure all – stay glued to the shooters. Sorry. It's hard as – I mean, it's, it sounds easy, but stay glued to the shooters so none of those guys can really kill you from three. All right, next question. This is from, I believe, our guy, Jeremiah. Um, our guy? Assuming Wiggs – our <laughs> son's guy Jeremiah's on punishment Jeremiah. right now with me <laughs> you hear that Jeremiah hopefully you're listening to this but um, um we have our little ups and downs so we're in a feud right now but still appreciate him submitting a question and supporting the pod so shout out to Jeremiah right right he says, assuming Wiggs is on a minutes restriction, do you think Kerr would consider starting Gary Payton II for the Fox matchup while Wiggs gets his legs back? You want me to go first? Yeah, I mean, we I kind of already said You did, but like, in case yeah. someone didn't listen to our preview episode, which, shame on you if you didn't, go back and listen, but we'll restate it right. again here, so you got this. Yeah, so I said I would not be surprised if they start Gary at some point in the series um in place of looney not in place of wiggins but um yeah for that purpose to put him on fox and let wiggins kind of roam away on one of those shooters and just see if gary payton can make fox's life tougher for the minutes that he's in and then they come in with looney and just kind of you know play defense that way but i wouldn't be surprised if they do it but i am expecting wigs to start and i'm expecting looney to start game one game two so if they do do that I don't think we'd see it until later on in the series. 
yeah, I'm aligned with you on that. So I don't really have much to add there. Cool. Question four. Question four. This is from Kick Game Wavy. Um, at Kick Game hey, Wavy. Wavy. <laughs> <laughs> He said, when it comes to defensive schemes, which would be more effective? Focus on containing the others while letting Sabonis and Fox eat or letting the others try to beat you while containing Sabonis and Fox? We addressed this too. Go back and listen to that playoff preview. But go ahead, Justin. You got this. (laughs) Yes. So I said I expect them to, quote unquote, let Sabonis and Fox eat um, and and try to contain the others because the others – that three point barrage that's coming from the other guys can really hurt you. And, you know, players like Sabonis and Fox, they're so good that they're probably going to, you know, hurt you in some way regardless. So I think letting them play up against your better defenders one-on-one or, you know, one, 1.5 on one for majority of the series and majority of the games, I think is going to benefit you a little bit more. Um, and then when it comes down to crunch time, those other guys won't really have as much of a rhythm. So if they do end up doubling the Sabonis or, you know, crowding Fox in his space and not trying to let him get his shots off in the clutch, he might pass to a Kevin Herter or a Harrison Barnes, and they might not have that rhythm to hit those threes. And that's where you really hurt them and they miss those shots late in the game. So um, I think it totally depends on the matchup. But for this matchup specifically, you stay home on those shooters because they can – hurt you. And we saw them do this against the Mavericks with Luka and Brunson. They kind of let Luka, they, they let Wiggins guard Luka one-on-one, and they let Draymond guard Brunson one-on-one, and they just tried to stay glued to the other shooters as much as they can, and it and it worked out in their favor because they were not hitting those threes <laughs> the way they were hitting them against Phoenix and all those other teams. So that's what I would Facts. do them too. It's, for the most part, always let the stars beat you and contain the other guys because it, it can never be done alone. You need the others. Right. And especially when you got defenders like the Warriors do that you feel pretty confident in their ability to guard one on one. If you a team like the Kings, though, I don't think you let somebody sit on the island with Steph Curry one on one the whole series. You gonna get he will beat you. <laughs> so they're going to have to send multiple bodies at Steph. But Wiggins, Draymond, GP2, Looney feel pretty confident about their ability to not get completely destroyed. You know, four or five, six games with Sabonis and Fox. So that's what I would do. Okay. Let's see. Question number five. Um, Justin, you can tell me who this comes from, but it's a road record concern on a scale. So what's the road record concern on a scale of one to 10 heading into the series, especially factoring in Sacramento's home crowd? Who's that from? Yeah, This is from a man at Sam Hoops. Sam's Hoops. Sorry. Okay. See guy. Um, shout out to Sam. And, shout out um, to Sam. Appreciate the question. Yeah. For me, I have zero road concern record. Like, I'm just going to say this, and I've been saying this. That road record this season is fake. Just th- throw it out the window. It was an anomaly. It was an aberration. Mm-hmm. There's a, a variety of reasons why it happened. And Justin and I detailed them throughout the course of the season. If you want to go back and listen to old episodes, we can. But the reason why I even stopped trying to like go through it is because it's not one single thing. It's multiple things. And when you talk about it, it just starts to sound like excuses. Right. But it's not. And like, yes, some of it is just the Warriors like didn't show up in their true selves to like play. But that's not the main reason. And it's not majority of that. But if you have to just assign one big thing to it it was because they played 45 games without Andrew Wiggins and 27 without Stephen Curry and their starters missed a combined 80 plus games over the course of the season that's a large portion of it and so we got all our guys back so just the road it's fake it's fake it's not real (laughs) throw the road record out from the regular season So I have no concerns over it. Um, But even more so, I have no concerns over it because this is going to be in Sacramento. And yes, yes, it's the Kings first time in the playoffs in however many years. And they just ended a playoff drought. They were one of the longest 
teams in sports, not just basketball, in sports who hadn't been to the playoffs. And they just ended that drought. So, yes. And Kings fans love their team. Yes. All those things. Check, check, check. And we just had Kenny telling us, you know, from the playoff preview, we had Kenny telling us, Caraway that he thinks it's not going to be that many Warriors fans in the crowd. We disagree, though. So I think the Warriors are the one team that negates on some level the playoff advantage that the Kings would have from a from a home court. And in addition, the Kings are actually better on the road than they are at home. So it's one of the places this year the Warriors have won in, not just in the, the fake game at the end of the year, but they won there. So listen, um, I think the Warriors can win a game there at least one, right? And that's all they need to do and, and, and hold down home court. So can they win a second? We'll see. They're starting out on the road. And the goal will be definitely to get that first game. It's always get the first game and split those those games on the road. So um, that will be their game plan going in. Draymond talks about it on his podcast. So I just don't have a high level of concern when it comes to the road record. This is a young, inexperienced team. I don't think it's going to be easy. I don't think it's going to be easy. That's not what I'm saying. But I think the Warriors can get a win on the road. And again, we're going to just keep touting this, but the Warriors, this group, this group, they have won a road game in every playoff series that they've played in. Okay. So at least one. So they have that history. And I think that history is going to continue into the present. So for all those reasons, I am not concerned. I agree. Uh, I agree. And I guess also from a basketball standpoint, you can say, hey, their defense doesn't hold up on the road or it hasn't held up on the road this season. Mm -hmm. Again, to your point, missing a lot of guys over the course of this year. And, you know, they added a guy who adds a ton to their defense, especially at the point of attack with Gary Payton a second. So it just that just, you know, solves Mm -hmm. some of the problems that they've had on the road this season. So, again, not concerned as well. All right, last question. It's my favorite number, number six, but I'm going to let you take it even though it's my favorite number, Justin. <laughs> this is from Keys for the Low. Hey, hey. Keys for the Low, all right? My man Sos Andretti on, on Twitter, right? Well, at Keys for the Low. But he asks, what's your favorite skill of 30s? And out of everything you've seen him do, what's the first thing you'd teach your son? So... Um, I guess to answer this question, I don't want to take the cliche and be like shooting because obviously like that's his superpower skill and that skill itself is, you know, it is what it is. So outside of that, I would probably say his handle. I'd probably say his handle Um, because he can get to anywhere he wants to get to on the court. And I think that's super valuable no matter how good of a shooter or finisher you are being able to get anywhere on the court. Um, you can just manipulate a defense any kind of way you want doing that. So I would teach my son that um, and make sure he can see the whole floor and stuff like that too. So obviously shooting is King, but got to have that handle too. Got to have that handle. Respect, respect. Um, all right. I got one question to throw at you, Justin. Okay. What's your prediction for this series? I know it's Warriors, but Warriors in how many? And w- before you answer that, though, are we still out of the prediction business because we stopped it during the season? Or are we prepared to get back into the prediction business? If you feel strongly about it's, it, you don't have to answer the question. No, nah, it's playoffs. It's playoff time. So I think we can get back into the prediction business for series. Um, we did it all last year for the for the playoffs, and we were pretty pretty on par. I mean, I think the trend from last year that I had was I would guess the amount of games, and they would win in one less game than I guessed. Oh, I was spot on <laughs> with every series last year. Wow! In terms okay, of the number, okay. of I was, but but I'm I'm really struggling with this King series. I'll tell you why after you tell me your prediction. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to go Golden State in six, trying to continue the trend from last year. Okay. Um, I want to lean five, but I, I also want to give every opponent a little bit of respect and say that they, they'll get one more game than I expect them to get. So I'm going to go Golden State in six. And, you know, I'm sure you're going to, you know, make this point as well, but they're not starting at home. So that's it's going to be tough to win two row games, you know, out of your first five games. So that's just going to be tough to do. But yeah, I'm going to go Golden State in six. Yeah, I like that pick and I'm not mad at it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to just go with because I was on a podcast yesterday. Um, let me let me let me shout out the pod. Um, it is Ted Talks Ball. Okay. So shout out to Ted for having me on. His handle is at Ted H6. Um, and we we also talk to King. So, so check that out. Um, but I'm going to go with what I said on his pod because I don't want to be like, oh, Natalie saying things in different places. And I don't like to hedge. I'm not a hedger. Um, but if I was ever going to hedge, this would be the series that, that I'd hedge in. Um, I said Warriors in five. And every rational part of me and logical part of me says, nah, this is likely to be a six-game series. But it's like more like a gut, like a feeling I have, you know? And so I'm just someone who always listens to my gut. So I'm going to say Warriors in five. Um, and I definitely don't mean that disrespectfully. I feel like anytime you say a series is going to be five, um, people take it that way and understandably. But a five-game series can still be a hard series. And the Warriors have had many five-game series that are hard. So I don't say five games as in like um, the Kings. Like every game is a blowout. Yeah, right. I don't think there will really be any blowouts, to be honest. I just think that, I mean, there could be, but I just think that, I think that the Warriors will be able to take advantage of the Kings' inexperience um, with it being their first time in a playoff situation. And that is, to me, versus like, if they if they do another series on the road, starting on the road because we just don't know what the future is going to hold. But if they do another series on the road, I probably would just start off by saying six because it's just very hard. Because what you're saying is they got to go in and get game one, right? They likely split after that. So now you have a one-one split. Then they come back home and they win those two games, right? But then they got to go back on the road and you're saying win that fifth game. So it's not just a matter of winning a second game in their home, but it's also winning three games in a row at some point. And right. um, that like, it's just hard to do. It's hard to do. Like when you start out at home, you know, and if you get like the, the first two home games and then you go on the road and split, it's a lot easier now, even if you don't sweep, to just come back home and get that fifth game. So it's the starting on the road that changes the dynamic because somewhere in there, you got to win three in a row. And it's just very hard to win three games in a row. But if there's any team right now who the Warriors have the potential to play that they could probably do that to, I think it would be the Kings. The only other ones would be some of those lower-seeded teams like Minnesota, um, you know, OKC, Pelicans maybe, right? Like it would be some of those teams, but I don't think it would be like any of the other teams ahead of them, you know? So the Kings are a very good team. Like I am a huge Fox fan, huge De'Aaron Fox fan. So trust me, this is not shade or disrespect to them. Um, but I think, you know, I think they're going to be very focused, again, based on what Draymond said. I think they're going to really want to try to get it done in, in, in five at, a, at max. So if they're really dialed in and they do what they were supposed to, are supposed to, I think they can do it. But if it goes six, I wouldn't be surprised. And I'm okay being wrong in this one. But it's to their benefit to get it done earlier because of their age and all the reasons we know. So the more time they can give themselves while other people are still playing is a benefit. 
Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Well, guys, appreciate y'all tuning in with us for this uh, mailbag. Also, um, we're recording this before um, the, the the playoffs, obviously, but also like it's 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 the first night of the play-ins, and we don't even know all the results. So, to the extent that I'm saying like we don't know who some of the matchups are going to be or something like that, and by the time we actually publish this, that would be the the reason why. Um, so just keep that in mind, but also I just want to say thank you to everyone who, um, replied to me, tweeted at me today, um, for anyone on Twitter, my grandmother went into the hospital. She's still there. I don't have an update. I don't think I'm going to be able to respond to everybody individually. So I will definitely tweet something, but I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate all of the responses. I definitely believe in the power of prayer, which is why I tweeted it, um, because I just believe in it. And so I do appreciate everyone who sent positive words, thoughts, prayers. Um, I'll send an update when we have one, but right now we don't. We're just waiting on tests and, and, you know, praying that she'll be okay. So that's all I have for now, but I am very thankful. And I just wanted to shout out Dub Nation and anyone else who's a supporter um, who reached out to me. I really appreciate it. So until next time, and there will be more mailbags and there will be more episodes. We appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Golden Spaces Pod. Make sure you're leaving us a five-star rating. You're giving us a positive review. You're downloading. You're telling your people, especially as we ramp up for this playoffs, um, you know, tell a friend. And thank you for the, to, for the unwavering support. Take care.